Now, look, let's not have any more argument about this. Since Hop Singh has been away, this place has been turned into a pigsty. And one of you is going to stay here and get this place back into shape again. Who's it going to be? Oh, oh it ought to be you, Adam and little Joe. I, you know I ain't no good at this housekeeping. Uh, neither am I, Pa. Neither am I. I agree with Hearts. It ought to be Joe. Yeah, well, why always me and not you? All right, let's hearts. stop the haggling. We'll decide who it'll be by the usual fair method. I want to choose my match. I'm tired of getting beat. Go ahead. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Come together. Take about two days to get that bull back up here from the railway siding. By the time we get back, I expect a loser to have this house clean as a whistle. The whole house. Understood? Whistle. The whole house. Let's get ready, boys. Clean as a whistle. Yeah, I didn't think horse had it anyway. <laughs> like I'm beef, I'm going to bed. Yeah. Well, if the kitchen is this clean, I'll have to admit horse is a real great housekeeper. <laughs> uh, let's go see. Well, this is the cleanest this kitchen's ever been. That 
house is not only a first-rate housekeeper, it's a first-rate cook. This is a better stew than Hop Singh ever dished up. Yeah. Hey, Pa! Pa, come quick, upstairs! Come on, hurry! Oh, she is, Bob? No. She must be the one. Mm -hmm. That cleaned the house and made that stew. Well, why would you want to do a thing like that? Shh, shh, Don't wake her up. She must be tired from doing all that work. A well, horse can tell us who she is. Hey, yeah, maybe in town all day. Hey, Pa. Hey, maybe some of that satchel will tell us who she is. I don't, I don't want to go in the satchel. Oh, why not? You know, tell him how long Hoss might be away. Uh, it wouldn't be right. I'll go ahead and look in the satchel. Uh, come on. Just one moment. I'm Ben Cartwright. These are my sons, and we're in this house because we we live here. Yeah, and, and seeing as we didn't know who you were, ma'am, we, we, we thought we'd look in your little satchel there and see if we could find out who you were. You have tongues, haven't you? All you had to do was to ask, and I'd tell you that I'm Nellie Lynch. <laughs> and did you find new house? Uh, no, ma'am, I didn't, Miss Lynch. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, just a minute, young man. Danny always was an easy-going soul, and I know he let you brutes get away with murder. But you throw in the muck as long as I'm staying here. And don't you ever come in this house again. Look at the way you are. Or you've seen your last day on the son's ranch. Your son's ranch? That's what I said. Mrs. Lynch, your son must be Danny Lynch. Of course it's Danny Lynch. Now, who else would have be coming all the way from Ireland to see one more time before I divert my son, Danny? Mrs. Lynch, I think there's something you want I'll to know. I'll stop talking so much. It's not the likes of you I come over here to see. So stop standing there and go fetch me, Danny. Get! Go. Paul, I've been looking all over the place for you. I want to tell you about Miss Lynch. I know all about Mrs. Lynch. Why didn't you tell her the truth? Paul, that little woman came all the way from Ireland and thinking that... Paul, I just couldn't break her heart. Hoss, you should have told her the truth. Paul, if it hadn't been for that little lady, I'd have drowned it right out there in that well before you got back. Drowned? Yes, sir. I fell in the well. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, burn it, it ain't funny. Paul, that little woman saved my life. Now, now look, Hoss, you've got to be sensible about this. We've got a lot of men working around here, and sooner or later, somebody's going to let the cat out of the bag. Shh. Well, you're not doing her a kindness by letting her believe a lie. Uh, uh, what's stopping you from going right back in the house now and telling her the truth? Well... Well, she oughtn't to hear the truth from a stranger. She's going to hear it from the man who started this whole thing. Come on. to come to pay me a visit. I hope you brought your own bottle of whiskey. Good. I don't have a drink left in the house. On your feet now, Mr. Cartwright here paid your fine. You're free to go. Now, just a moment, Danny. 
There's something fishy here. Beware of strangers bearing gifts. And don't forget we'll be out of here tomorrow. Yeah, you're right, Howie. You never did care much about the likes of Danny Lynch, Mr. Cartwright. So I don't think you'd do me a favor without some strings attached. There are no strings, Danny. I'd just like you to come out to the Ponderosa. Ha! <laughs> no strings, he says. Lock the door, Sheriff, and give him back his money. I'd rather rat in the spot where I lie than work me indebtedness out on the Ponderosa like a slave in bondage. I reject you, officer, and bid you good day. I doubt that the devil himself could get an honest day's work out of you, so I certainly wouldn't be wasting my time trying to. I just thought you'd like to see your mother. Oh, that it would, that it would. <laughs> but even if I had the eyes of an eagle, I couldn't see all the way to Ireland. <laughs> oh, Howie, I got a letter from me, mother, a week ago, and he's telling me. <laughs> your mother is not in Ireland. She's at the Ponderosa. You mean my mother's here in Nevada? That's what I said. I can't believe she's really here. I just can't believe it. We can't believe that you're the owner of the Ponderosa either. Tell me, how did she take it when she found out all the things that I wrote in my letters were lies? Well, we, uh... We didn't tell her, Danny. We thought you'd like to do that yourself. Well, Dobby. Come on, Danny. In my regards to your dear old mother there, Danny. And have one for me. So, Paul, that's why I sent little Joe out in a buggy with her. It, it, now, what's it going to hurt, Paul? Well, I said no, and that's exactly what I meant, no. Now, look, Hoss, I, I know you're grateful to her, and you have a nice, soft heart, but you don't have a soft head, and neither do I. I, I told you this before. Sooner or later, Mrs. Lynch has got to find out about him. But no, she don't, Paul. That's just the point. She ain't gonna be here but a couple of weeks. Now, what's it gonna hurt if we play like her son is the owner of the Ponderosa? Paul, I can put up with Danny for a couple of weeks a lot easier than I can break that poor old lady's heart. Oh, God bless you. How she got the heart of a saint? You keep out of this. Paul, you... You just gotta stop thinking about how you feel about Danny and think about that poor old lady. She came all the way over here from Ireland, Paul, and it just wouldn't be fair. Hoss, will you stop being ridiculous? Now, you're not gonna change my mind. And neither are you. Well, Danny, at least we can get you cleaned up. <clears throat> Why don't you come on in the kitchen with me, huh? Don't worry, it's dead. Danny! Never mind getting cleaned up. It's too late for that. She's here. Tis a lovely place my Danny boy has. Oh, a lovely place. That it is, ma'am. Danny? Uh. Darby? Danny. I've been called Darby since the day you left home. Darby! Oh, Darby! Oh, oh, sweet Darby! I can't believe my eyes! Oh, sweet Darby! Oh, oh Danny, I'm Oh, God, God love you. Oh, thank you. Danny! Oh, I've been so lonely. Oh, Danny! Oh, Danny! Danny be all shaven and I want to pass suits on by now. What happened? Oh, that burning nothing happened. You mean he wouldn't go for it? No. We tried to talk him into it, but solid as a rock. Oh, Danny, I'm thinking. Oh, Danny. Oh, I've been so lonely. Oh, Danny. Oh, Danny, I'm thinking. Oh, God, look. You know, I think the rock just might melt. Oh, oh. 
weeks. No more two weeks. Danny Lynch, just look at you now. Faith and only a mother could love you. You're a sight to behold. You're right, Miss Lynch. He don't look much like the owner of the Ponderosa, does he? But now that you're here, maybe he'll start sprucing up a little bit instead of looking like one of us cowhands. Well, tell me now, Dobie, did you come all the way over here to see me, Trousseau? Or was it your Danny boy you really came to see? <laughs> <laughs> tell me, Dobie. Oh, Danny, you devil. You know I don't have to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> May I? Certainly. <laughs> I haven't tasted a fine Irish stew like that since the day I left me home. <laughs> my mother's a fine cook, isn't she, fellas? Oh, yeah. sure is. She is. There's only one way to top off a meal like that. It's a spot of good brandy. <laughs> well, uh, Ben, you know where I keep my bottle. Get it for me, will you, please? I'll get it for you, Father. You just stay right there, little Joe. I'm going to get this brandy myself. You enjoy a spot of brandy, don't you, Dobby? No, I don't. Well, uh, I take a wee spot now and then for medicinal purposes. Only because my doctor recommends it. He says it's good to keep me old blood circulating. Mm -hmm. Then you have a very wise doctor. <laughs> my father always told me, watch out for a man who doesn't drink. And if you run into an Irishman that doesn't drink, stay away from him like you stay away from the plague. But remember, it was the whiskey that done him in long before his time. God rest his poor soul. Ah, come on, Dobby. You and I both know that he was drowned while fishing in the Irish Sea off Balregan. Well, if he wasn't drunk, he wouldn't have fallen out of his dory. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ben. No, 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 not for me. <laughs> ben, you know I always like to do the honors with me own hands. Oh, that's enough for me. Well, seeing this is a special occasion, Ben, I don't mind if you and the boys join me in a spot of brandy. A little spot of brandy? No, thanks, boss. No. This is a very special occasion, Danny. And I really didn't mean to spoil it by reminding you of how your father left this world. I don't have to worry about you, Danny. Any man that could build an empire like the Ponderosa <laughs> would never let the whiskey ruin his life. Forgive me, son. <laughs> There's nothing to forgive. And seeing we're together, well, it's just nothing to do but celebrate. Uh, uh. Morning, Dobby. And how are you this fine day? Never mind how I am. You just should get down here. Remember, you have to do something for me today. Ben! Ben! Leave your horse saddle. I want to use it. No, Paul. Wait. 
hasn't been up a single day before noon since he's been here. Well, at least that way you'll see less of him, Paul. No. Boy, he ain't much like his ma, is he? I don't see how a woman her age does it, Paul. She's up every morning fixing breakfast, and then after that, she's working all day like a slave. You know, that Nellie Lynch is a... Well, she's a remarkable woman. I, I have a great deal of respect for her. You know, I wouldn't mind it if she spent the rest of her days right here in the Ponderosa. But how a, a wonderful woman like her could mother a, a useless, shiftless, worthless, lazy parasite like that, that son of hers. Well, this is just beyond my understanding. Danny! Where did you get all the money? It's my passage money, Danny. I paid my passage here, and I'm paying my passage home. Now, what kind of a son owning a grand ranch like the Ponderosa would permit his poor mother to buy her own passage back to Ireland? Well, not your Danny boy. Here, you take it back, and I'll buy your passage myself. I accept charity from no one, not even you, Danny. Not even if you owned every foot of ground in America. So stop arguing with me and put it in your pocket. And go to town and make all the arrangements. You have no right to be so proud and independent. Ah, oh, keep the money and save your breath. Uh, yours, eh, Danny? Ah, oh, he's the finest. Now, go along with you and purchase my passage back to Ireland. We have a... You said Ireland? Yeah. Uh, there's a ship leaving New Orleans at Kilkennan the last of the month. Oh, I can't accept the passage money for the Kilkennan. Your mother will have to pay for that in New Orleans when she gets there. You could just leave $10 with me. It'll more than cover the cost of telegraphing to New Orleans. And then you can pay for the stagecoach ticket, our stagecoach ticket, uh, any time you want. Before she leaves, of course. Well, thank you, Mr. Ramsey. It's a pleasure doing business with you. And it's a very bright young man you are. Thank you, Danny. Never saw you so prosperous, Danny. Your luck sure must have changed since the last time I saw you. My, my, this coach sure has a rich feeling. Uh, I'll bet you could... Uh, it ain't for sale, so quit fingering it. But, Danny, I'm flat busted. I couldn't buy it if it was. Uh, I haven't even the price of a glass of whiskey. Well, I better be on my way. It's good seeing you again, Howie. Well, Danny, uh, when the cards was turning right for me, did I ever turn my back on you? No, you didn't, Howie. And it wouldn't turn me back on you, but I'm not as prosperous as I look. Oh, but Danny, the... No, that is not my money, Howie. I'm not lying to you. It is not my money. But, Danny, it's got purchasing power no matter whose money it is. Please, Danny. I I'm pleading with you. I beg with you. I'll get on my knees. Oh, now, stop it, Howie. Stop it. Well... You never deserted me when I was down and out, and I will not desert you. I'll buy you one stiff drink and a good meal, and that's all. Danny, that's all I can ask of you. Hey, come on, Danny, come on. I I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. Danny, come on. That's Bob's horse, all right. Maybe we can talk him to staying in town at the hotel when Mrs. Lynch leaves. Well, 
Well, you went around, Mr. Lynch. I'm in. Give me three. Do you suppose Pa was so fed up with Danny that he was willing to give him money to gamble with just to get rid of him? Adam, little Joe, how's that fine new bull of yours? Good. I'm uh, still offering 500. Well, that's a fair price, Mr. Higgins. You get ready to sell him, we'll let you know. Well, I'm out. Well, how about you, Mr. Lynch? Oh, I'll bet. Um... There. I'm sure I'm foolish, but I'll call you. All I've got is two pairs, sevens and sixes. What have you got, Mr. Lynch? All he's got is a pair of aces. How much has he lost so far? That's about $250. I'm dealing you out this time, Danny. Why? Because you haven't got any money. Well, isn't my credit good? Not with me, it isn't. Uh, if you can't get credit with men that know you, Mr. Lynch, you can't expect to get it from me. How about you, Mr. Higgins? I'm sorry, Danny. I'm broke. I just heard you offer 500 for a bull. Adam, I hope let's, I... Let's go, Danny. Yeah. Are you sure you didn't give him the money? I swear it, Paul. Well, where did you get it? I don't know. Ah, oh, good horse is no good at all. And, Danny, you ain't gonna get no argument from Paul on that subject. Oh, no good. Danny, you done said that once. Now, hush up before you wake up your maw. You don't want her to come down here and see you in this condition, do you? to run a ranch. <clears throat> and you know, there's nothing like lying in bed for clearing the head. <laughs> and it's lucky you are in having the cart rates for working while you do the thinking. <laughs> Certainly gives them an appetite. Dobby, you've been working too hard. I think I'll send for the cook, Hop Singh, and have him come back from San Francisco. You do no such thing. With a name like that, he could pardon all of us. Besides, I like the cooking. Haven't I been doing it for years back in Ireland? Now, did you make all the arrangements for me going back home, Danny? Well, I, I took that long trip into town, didn't I? Oh, Danny. I wish I could take you with me. But I, I know your roots are here in America now. <laughs> Dobby. I'm going back into town and cancel all the arrangements for your trip back home. In heaven's name, why? Because you're never going back. You're staying right here with me. <sighs> I need you, Dobby. Oh, I wish I could be with you always, Dobby. But I couldn't. Why not? Until I left Ireland to visit you, I'd never been further from Dan Boyan than Bar Riggin. No, I, I'd never rest easy, buried in a foreign soil. Uh, you know that, Danny. Sure, Danny. That I do. I told you boys to take this bull out to the herd. Uh, he also had us out mending fences. We can't be two places at once. See, the Cartwrights are coming for lunch. I think I'll mosey along. Oh, but why, Danny? You haven't eaten. Well, I, I, I got to check up on their work. You know, it's not all manual labor running a ranch. It's thinking, Dobby. It's thinking. Oh. <clears throat> 
Goodbye. Get your rope, Joe. Yeah. Hello. Hey, Paul, he's gone. You thinking what I'm thinking? Higgins. And Danny heard that off for five hundred dollars. I'll go with you, Hoss. <laughs> Quite a chore you got, huh? Yeah, that's a heap of wood. Say, if you'd like to finish sawing that and stack it over in that pile, I'll be glad to give you $25. Oh, no, thank you, Mr. Higgins. Well, I can't say as I blame you. What are you doing with Ben Cartwright's bull? Uh, well, um, Ben has a lot of bulls, uh, so he decided to sell this one to you. He asked me to bring it over to you. Is he still asking the same price? Five hundred. Oh. I sure would like to buy that bull, Danny. I surely would. Well, what's stopping you from owning him? Ben. What I just told you. I'd be willing to go even higher than the five hundred, but before we can close any deal, I'd better hear what Ben says. Hello, Ben. John. Uh, ben, I, I, I... Let me get up on your horse. So long, John. So long, Ben. Maybe I'll get you a drink, Ben. No, it's too late for that. It's all gone. What are you gentlemen doing home at this time of day? Isn't there any work to be done? Can't be. I hate to see you working your fingers to the bone, darning me socks. Oh, I've darned your socks before, Danny. And your father's, too. What is it, Danny? Well, uh, those are not my socks. They're Ben's. And every stitch of clothes I have on are Ben's. Even my shoes are his. Well, what do you mean? No, no, I, I'd rather die than this, do this to you, Danny. But now, no, no, don't say a word. Just listen. And when I'm finished, you won't even want to look or ever see a fancy Danny boy again. Oh. Now, listen, please. The Cartwrights own the Ponderosa. I don't own anything, and I never did. I was in jail when you arrived. Ben Cartwright has always been set against me and me ways because Haas and his brothers, Ben too, otherwise he wouldn't have gone along with it. Couldn't have stand to see you come halfway across the world and have your heart broken into pieces. They let me pretend I own a Ponderosa. I'm sort of good too. Wearing fine clothes. Living in a fine house. It felt good inside, too. Because I could see how proud you were of me. I don't feel proud of you now. But let me get it all out, please. I stole Ben Cartwright's bull to sell it so that I could give you back the money. 
that you gave me for your passage home. But he caught me before I could sell it. What happened to the money? Well, I, I got drunk and I lost in the poker game in the pub. Oh, Danny! You gambled away my passage money. I don't have any more money. Mrs. Lynch, you'll have the money to get back to Ireland. Oh, Danny, what made you do it? I don't know. I met a friend and I did it. I did it because I'm Danny Lynch. Don't you worry about your passage back to Ireland. Paul give it to you. I never borrowed a farthing in my life, and I never thought I would. But it'd all be repaid. You can be sure of that. Abby, I love you. And I'm sorry I hurt you so. Goodbye, Dobby. the same day that he tried to sell me Ben's bull. I didn't take him serious right off, but he was. Seems kind of funny, doesn't it, Horst? Sure does. Uh, we got no notion he's over here. We've been looking for him for days. Glad Paul decided to invite you to Ms. Lynch's farewell party, though. You mean he chopped all that by himself? Yes, sir. -y. He's done a real fine job, Horst. Why, I've got enough wood to last me all winter. Hello, Horst! Hey, Daddy. Oh, John's been telling me how hard you've been working. He sure wasn't lying. Hoss, how's me, Dobby? She's just fine, Danny. As a matter of fact, she's going back to Ireland. We're having a little farewell party for her tonight. I know she'd appreciate it a great deal if you could be there. Well, the next time I see Dobby, I'll have the money for her fare back to Ireland in my pocket, or I won't see her at all. Mr. Higgins, that's the last of the wood. May I have me money, please? Sure, Danny, but there's a lot of other work you can do around here. Uh, just me money, please. Hey, Mr. Higgins, I wonder if you'd trust me enough to lend me a horse to ride into town. Sure, I guess so, Danny. Well, thanks, Mr. Higgins. Thanks for everything. <laughs> hey, Danny, Danny, wait a minute. Danny, what you gonna be doing in town? Why do you think Danny Lynch would be doing in town? <laughs> Horse, you can't change the spots on a leopard. Oh, you, you've been working like a mule. He cut all that wood and stacked it for Mr. Higgins. That, that must prove he's changed. Mm -hmm. It could also prove that all he wanted was a steak. Did he continue to work for Higgins? No. Went straight to town. Maybe he's got a plan. You don't need a plan to stand up to a bar. Well, anyhow, I'm gonna have to ride in town and find out. I just couldn't face that poor Miss Lynch if Danny don't show up for that party. Well, she's in there now, preparing for that party. Just as excited as the first day she got here. Horse, wait for me. I couldn't face it either. I'll go with you. Uh, I'm out. Small flush. That looks like me pot. <laughs> Bartender, some whiskey. My 
I thought it would be too late. Yeah, it looks like. Cards are sure smiling on you today, Danny. Here, yeah, let's celebrate. I don't need that. I am not drinking. Furthermore, you can remove it from me presence. Well, let's ante up. There it is, Danny. That's all you get from me. I'm through. Well, you called. I got three of the tiniest ones in the deck. They may be tiny, but they're big enough for aces up. <laughs> Danny, come on now. Danny, you, you got over $250 here. Now, let's get out of here. Yeah. Come on. Come on now. Do you mind if I sit in? You can sit in if you want to, but the money's leaving. Well, well, come no, 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 Howie, uh, you're broke. Now, uh, give Mr. Wiley a seat. Oh, Daddy, come on, come on Danny, now. Danny, you done broke the table. Yeah, Excuse but me. Mr. Wiley's holding plenty. Well, I might have known. I have no objection to two-handed poker. Do you, Mr. Lynch? Oh, none at all. You've separated me from so much of my money in the past years, I'd like to try and get some of it back. <laughs> well, let's see if you can. But we're not going to play poker. Now, here's 250. You put up a like amount, and I'll high card you for it. Danny. Would you like to pick your card first, Mr. Lynch? Oh, I don't care who picks first, Mr. Wiley, but we're not going to do it that way. Here. Haas, you shuffle the deck and put it around the table. Danny, don't do it. For your mother's sake, don't do it. Shuffle them. I just plain can't stand it. I can tell by your face what happened. He wanted to play double or nothing with Wiley. If I'd have stayed there another minute, I'd have broke him in two. Why couldn't he quit when he had the 250? Because he's Danny Lynch. I better tell Mrs. Lynch that he won't be here. That poor lady she's had so much. Lynch, uh, I'm terribly sorry, but I don't think Danny will be coming to the party. Poor Danny. He's still ashamed to face his mother. Yeah, I, I feel kind of badly that we're all going along with Danny's lie. Mm -hmm. But we did it out of the deepest affection and admiration for you. Mm. Dear Mr. Cartwright, you're a kind man. You and your fine boys, you don't need to be sorry for what you did. You see, I knew the truth all along. You did? When? The minute I saw Danny's face. You can't fool a mother about her own son, especially an Irish mother. <laughs> and I felt so grateful to you. That's why I... Kept the Ponderosa all clean and spotless out of my gratitude. And about this party. It's grand of you. But would you make my apologies to everyone? I just don't feel like a party. And the only woman a son Danny ever truly loved. Dad, you drunk. Oh, no, I'm not. This is the only drink that passed me gullet and days. 
Here. Don't bother to count it. Take me word for it, there's 500 beautiful dollars nestled snug and warm behind that string. <laughs> Take me word, because I'm never gonna lie to you again. Never. Well, a toast to me mother. May the winds blow kind on the kill cannon as it sails across the sea carrying me Dobby. And a Danny boy back to Ireland. Danny! I know that's a surprise, but isn't that a toast worth drinking to, Ben? When the stage leaves Virginia City tomorrow morning, you'll never have to look at this cheerful, smiling face of mine again. <laughs> Here, how's each you, Phil? Because unless you visit Nellie and Danny's fish and chip place in Dunboy, and you'll never taste the likes of them again. Ah, oh, Danny, this is the happiest day of my life. And I'm glad you don't own the Ponderosa. Because if you did, you couldn't go back to Ireland with me. <laughs> uh, well, now, Mrs. Lynch, I'm sure you haven't forgotten how to do an Irish jig. <laughs> Play, boys. Don't make a habit of those, Hoss. You'll have to go to clear to Ireland to get them. <laughs> Might be worth it, Paul. Boy, it's a great party. Yeah, sure is. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of miss having old Danny around, ain't you? Yeah, sure am. What am I saying? <laughs>